Ja to možno skúsim a snáď ma bude počuť. Okay, thank you. So, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, in this uh, presentation, we will try to show you a way to develop uh, web applications. And uh, it's the way using uh, Java EE standards and uh, CDI standard. And uh, we will, which is probably nothing new for most of you, I hope. And uh, we will talk uh, mainly about uh, CDI extensions. We will tell you what those are, what you can do with them, how they can help you in your application. And obviously, we will focus mainly on uh, ex the extension called uh, Delta Spike, which is uh, kind of the new kid on the block in uh, the CDI extensions world. So just a quick technical note. Uh, you can have uh, ask us some questions at the end of the presentation, but also during the presentation, you can tweet at us at rsmeral, hashtag devconf, and we'll address your questions or comments at the end of the presentation. But please also do pay some attention, but you, you can, you know, just, just a li one little tweet is okay. So uh, who are we? Well, uh, my name is uh, Ron Schmeral, and I'm a quality engineer at uh, Red Hat, and I'm interested mainly in Seam, Weld, and the Delta Spike projects. And uh, this guy is uh, Matos, and he is a quality engineer at Red Hat as well, and he is interested in beer and mountains. Okay, uh, let's go on. Uh, so uh, let's start with the basics. Uh, what is CDI? Uh, well, uh, I have to say this presentation is aimed mainly at people who already know Java EE and CDI, at least some bit. So let's do a quick stretching exercise. Please raise your hands who knows CDI and who has done something with, okay, brilliant, most of you. That's what I hope for. I don't have any time to go deep into it anyway, so just the basics. Uh, CDI stands for Contacts and Dependency Ejection. It is Java EE standard. And uh, you might know some of its uh, implementations like uh, JBoss Weld or Apache Open Web Beans or Couch or Candy. And uh, the, basically the main idea of uh, CDI is the type safe resolution and the, the whole idea of type safety is something that is uh, in the core of CDI and also the concept of scopes. The, all your beans are in their respective buckets called scopes, which is basically for this matter the same as contexts. This is just a short example of how beans look. I won't really go into it since most of you already know it. You can do some injection, that's the inject keyword you can do you can annotate it with the scope. You can have some producers, which producer beans just, I guess you know this. So uh, let's talk about uh, CDI extensions. Uh, so CDI extensions, well, uh, CDI is basically designed to be really extensible. And uh, it contains an SPI, which is a service provider interface for integration with other technologies, frameworks, anything. And for example, you could have uh, integration with uh, Seam or Spring or Gwit or any other framework. Uh, some of those actually exist. And uh, you, for example, the extensions, what can they do? Well, extension, through an extension, you can provide, for example, custom scopes in addition to the ones that are already in CDI, like uh, application scope, request scope, session scope. You can provide your own scope and a context, like for example, a page scope. I think I've seen that somewhere or if you were creating some integration with a business process engine, for example, you could need a business process scope, let's say. And uh, the main thing that CDI extensions do is uh, <coughs> that uh, they can somehow uh, work with the beans that are uh, deployed in the bean archive. They can provide new beans, or they can somehow mo modify, uh, change, and augment the existing beans. And uh, some, for example, add some annotations, remove annotations, and add some behaviors, and so on. And uh, all this can be done in reaction to the system events, which the container fires, and the extension can react to it. Like, for example, you can catch the event fired for all, every deployment, every bean, every injection point, and so on. So uh, 
there are, what are some existing extensions and frameworks? Well, I, as I said, uh, CDI is used to integrate with uh, other frameworks. And uh, this is a, quite a common type of extensions, which uh, exist basically as a part of some other framework. Like, for example, you have a security framework like uh, PikiLink or uh, RESTEasy or Agrava. Th these three, at least, I know have some integration with CDI. And uh, what I wanted to say that these are not like thought of as CDI extensions themselves. They just contain an extension to make your using of these frameworks a bit easier. Because CDI is kind of the glue of Java EE. So. And uh, then also there are some frameworks which are basically meant to be like collections of extensions. And uh, for example, I found uh, something like the ZK web framework contains some, again, package of CDI extensions. Also the software mill company has their package of CDI extensions. But uh, I will talk mainly about uh, these two uh, called uh, Seam, which is JBoss Seam 3 and uh, Apache MyFaces Code D because uh, they have some relation to Delta Spike, which I'm going to talk about. And uh, that the problem with these two is that they don't uh, really exist anymore, by which I mean that uh, they are not actively developed. Their development has been frozen. And uh, what happened to them? Well, the authors decided that it would be best to unite their efforts and uh, that they would be just more efficient in creating something that is actually useful. Uh, in, instead of creating two similar frameworks which do similar things. And uh, so Delta Spike came to be. So this on the left you can see the modules of Delta Spike. And uh, let's go through some basics. What is Delta Spike again? It is basically a CDI extension framework for web applications. And uh, why did it come to be? As I said, it is a united effort of authors of different extension frameworks. And who is behind it? So it's the, some Apache committers who worked on Kodi, some Sim developers who worked on, uh, JBo on Sim3, and some other authors of some other extensions. Then uh, when can you use it? Well, uh, the timeline or roadmap is not really clear for Delta Spike. It's in its open six version right now, but uh, the first major version should be coming real soon now. Uh, so. I talked about Seam and Kodi, so let's look at what those did and contained. Uh, JBoss Seam 3 contained a lot of useful modules. I won't really talk about all of them, but you can see there are some integrations with uh, some frameworks like uh, Wicked, for example, or Drools, or JBPM, or also some generally useful uh, modules like integration with servlet or validation or faces and so on. So a lot of useful stuff. And uh, also the MyFaces code contains some similar modules, also again some uh, tools for working with JSF and bean validation, JPA. They sort of overlapped in some parts, but Kodi also had some, something more. And uh, one other framework which I will mention is uh, called CDI query. It's actually not a framework, it was uh, just an extension which was uh, sort of meant to simplify uh, creation of entity repositories. I will talk about it later. And uh, so what happened to these now? I said that they are gone, and that's true. And this is what happened. Again, I guess this is a little hard to see <laughs> just so straight. But uh, you can see that, well, let's say most or some of the functionality from Seam got into Delta Spike, and uh, most of the Kodi modules got into the Delta Spike as well. The purple ones are Delta Spike. And uh, some of the C modules also turned into some completely different uh, frameworks, like, for example, Agrava, which we will be talking about today. And uh, for example, RESTEasy, the REST module turned into RESTEasy, and uh, so on. So some of the modules also turned into standards, like JMS2 or JTA. So these are all the modules of Delta Spike. And uh, I will talk only about a few of them because I don't really have the time to go through all of them. So the core module. Uh, the core module offers some tools for 
both extension authors and extension users. And uh, we will talk about mainly about the features for extension users. That's what we'll focus on. And uh, the first thing I would like to mention is uh, the concept of uh, considering exceptions as events. Let's take an example. Uh, this is your typical track edge block. You try to do something which you, uh, which you expect uh, will throw some exception. And then, of course, you catch it and you handle it, you log it, or whatever. But uh, the problem with this is that uh, it is tightly coupled in one block, and uh, it's not really easily extensible. So what you can do is uh, this. You inject one special event provided by Delta Spike, and uh, you just fire the event instead of handling it directly there. And uh, then you have your handlers, which uh, you can have multiple. That's the first benefit. And of course, uh, the whole point of this is the decoupling, be because that's somehow the core idea in CDI as well. And uh, so you can have, for example, multiple handlers for the same point where you fire, or you can have one single handler for all of your exceptions and so on. So just more flexibility. And then another concept I will mention is uh, type safe messages, which uh, lets you use uh, messages like the strings in your application in a nice and clean way where you don't have to handle the mess of resource bundles and so on. You can just uh, have your one simple interface, which you annotate as message bundle. <coughs> and uh, then your strings are methods. And again, you just annotate them with the message you want to pass. They can then also can have uh, attributes. And if you really need to, you can also have a point to some properties file. But that's just another option. And to use it like this, obviously, you just inject the interface, and you call the methods. And there you have your strings. So again, just uh, it's nice, clean, and type safe. Uh, the last things I will mention from the core module are is the concept of conditional bean exclusion, which is uh, interesting. It's basically an alternative way to the concept of alternative beans in uh, CDI, I would say, because it uh, helps you with this situation that I think is common, uh, where you want to use some beans for production and some other beans for testing. And you can just annotate the bean like, you want to exclude this testing bin always, except for when the phase is integration testing. And this is interesting in combination with the concept of project stage, uh, exactly for this reason. Uh, then another nice concept which helps you make your application nice and clean is uh, uh, simplified uh, resource loading, where you can load uh, file system or class path uh, resources Again, without having to deal with the hassle of opening files and closing them and handling some exceptions and input streams and stuff, you just in inject uh, your bean annotated uh, external resource. You point it to the file, and you can work with it. The closing of the file and handling of exceptions is dealt for you by the spike. So that's all from the core module. Now, uh, another module which is interesting is the bean validation. It's a really simple one, but uh, it has one nice feature I think it's worth mentioning, uh, because it allows you to use the services of injection in bean validators. And uh, I'll show you why I think that is interesting on this example. You can have, for example, some typical registration bean, where you want uh, your <coughs> to register your user, and you want to check whether the username is uh, already taken or whether it's free. And you can that, do that, again, very cleanly by implementing a validator. You just uh, make your constraint annotation, for example, not taken. You implement your constraint validator for that annotation. And uh, it's quite obvious what it does, I guess. But uh, what I wanted to, the point I wanted to make is that uh, this gives you the benefit of having uh, not just some simple static validators, like for uh, numbers and strings and email addresses and stuff, but you can do basically, so to say, stateful validation, because you can validate against the state of your application. 
So it's a simple thing, but sometimes the simple things are the best. Uh, the one module which is a lot bigger than beam validation is a data module. And well, let's start like this. Uh, maybe do you recognize something like this? It's, I won't, I, I, I'll tell you, it's, it's your typical JDBC boilerplate. I guess you don't want to look at it any longer because it's just ugly. Uh, it has some basic methods for creating. It's, it's not even whole, it's, it goes somewhere below the floor, it's really long. And uh, it contains method for creation, uh, removing, updating, and some basic uh, querying. So let's look at another example, maybe something like this. Do you recognize it? Yeah, that's the typical uh, JPA repository. You have some you know, injector entity manager, you have some persist, remove, some queries, just the basics. And it's a lot nicer than the JDBC, I have to say. But I think it still can be done even in a shorter way and even simpler, so maybe something like this. And uh, this is basically your whole repository which does the same things as this one and, or this one. And you just uh, extend one interface for the entity which you want to use. You annotate it and it has the same methods, the same stuff as in here. So it's nice and clean. You can just inject it and use it right away. Also, if you need some additional methods, uh, in addition to the, the ones that are implemented by default, you can uh, implement your own ones uh, using this a little strange feature, but nice. Uh, it's, it provides you kind of a DSL a domain specific language based on method names. So this method name, which otherwise would be really horrible, find by name like NJ, age between and gender, which is even hard to pronounce, uh, is in this case is okay because the method name is the query, basically. And it, uh, the extension just parses the name and expects some parameters which you can pass using the arguments. So that's nice, I think. But if you really find that uh, name hideous and really don't want to use it, you can also provide your own queries using an annotation and standard JPQL, so that's there as well. And uh, there's a lot more features in the data module, like an auditing API which helps you in identifying who and when mod modify your entities or support for criteria. And uh, also you can make your own DSL if you can think of something better and many other features. Uh, the last module I'll mention is a partial bean module. And uh, I'll say it like this, uh, maybe if you wondered how the magic in the data module is done, that you can just have an interface and it somehow magically is implemented, well, that's thanks to the partial bean module, which allows you to have a, kind of a single dynamic implementation for many bean interfaces. So this is just an example, something similar to what we have seen in the data module. Uh, you have some kind of uh, repository. You want to have it just as, as an interface. You have some method. And let's say you annotate it with your, <coughs> your query. As I'm saying, it's something similar to the data module, this example. And uh, this is how you would do it. You would just uh, provide one simple annotation, which is called partial, partial bean binding, which binds the interface and its dynamic implementation together. And it's based on the invocation handler concept from Java. And as you see, it's quite simple. You get the method object, the actual object on which it is invoked, and uh, the arguments, and you can just handle it dynamically. So that's nice, I think. OK, that's it from me. And now Matos will tell you something about the rest of the modules. OK, thank you, Ron. Can you hear me? As Ron has already said, my name is Matoš, and I work at Red Hat as QE in WFK team. In the next 20 minutes, I'm going to try to talk about two Delta Spike modules. It's, uh, they are JSF and security. Then uh, I will shortly describe you security framework Picket Link, and after that, I'm going to make a little introduction into framework Agurava. So let's start. JSF. I guess that most of you know what is JSF. Java Server Faces. Just listen research. Put your hands up. Who knows? JSF. Uh, most of you. Okay, but uh, what Delta Spike uh, does bring to JSF? 
it's uh, TSF view configs. That means, as you can guess, that developers can configure JSF in type save a. How it looks? It looks like this. Uh, this example of code leads to this, oh, terrible resolution, thank you, to these following paths. So that means that each interface represents one directory and each class represents some page, some JSF page. Uh, the annotations folder and uh, view, I guess, are hinting. They are optional, which is necessary that uh, the page has to be some implementation of the uh, view config interface. Uh, the annotations provides various uh, attributes, for example, name, as you can see in the example, uh, which says that the real name of the uh, of the JSF page is home and the name of the class can be different. Uh, I, will I will show you uh, one example of a code in a JSF module and mainly why is the type safe reconfiguration so useful? It's a case of navigation. Uh, okay, we got two pages in the directory pages. It's home and index and let's say that I'd like to redirect from the page index to the page home. Uh, for this purpose, I will create method action method, which I, when I call, call this method from the uh, page index, I'll be redirected to the page home. It returns my desired uh, page home. Okay, it's easy. But uh, let's say that I want to put some parameter to this redirection. This will be done. Uh, with this, nav uh, with this uh, annotation navigation parameter with the defined param key and uh, param value. And let's say that all the redirections to the page home should contain the params uh, in the URL. This will be done by the annotation view with the uh, attribute view param set to include. As you can see, um, it's uh, much better the configuration times type survey. You, uh, you can uh, more easily to maintain the code, uh, refactor it, it uh, or check the typos. Uh, uh, JSF module provides a lot of features, but uh, let's move on. The last module from Delta Spike I'm going to talk about today is security. Uh, one of the features uh, from security is the ability of securing method, uh, method invocation. The basic element of securing method invocation is an annotation security binding type. When I want to secure some method, in the first step I need to create my own new annotation, which has to be annotated with the security binding type. Okay, I... Oh, sorry. I've got new annotation, what now? I've got the method, which I want to secure, do something. So let's annotate it with this, my new annotation, and somebody or something has to decide if the user has uh, the permission to invoke this method or not. So for this reason, I will create new method, do sec check, which uh, returns boolean, and checks if the user has the right to invoke method or not. It has to be uh, annotated with the same annotation, uh, so they are bound together. And with the one more annotation secures, which says that this is the one, this is the method which uh, decides if the user has permission or not. Uh, this is uh, the simple approach, how to secure your application. The more complex and more complicated how to secure uh, applications are by securing access to Java classes. Basic element is, uh, again, annotation. It's secured. It's different than the previous one. The attribute is uh, some implementation of uh, interface access decision voter. The interface looks like this. It has one method, check permission, returns set of uh, security violations, so as you can check, as you can guess, it checks the permissions. Uh, and uh, when I want to secure some class or accesses to class, just annotate it with the annotation secured with appropriate voter, for example, custom access decision voter. And now all accesses to this class will be secured 
with this voter. What is great on this annotation and on uh, the module security is that it can be integrated with the JSF module. This code maybe looks familiar for you. It, it is some structure of JSF pages uh, written in JSF uh, with the JSF module. Some pages. Sure. Okay, let's say that all these pages has to be uh, accessible only for employees. For example, so annotate the upper, the upper uh, directory with the annotation secured with appropriate voter, and all access to, the, to these pages will be checked by this voter. Let's say that all pages in the directory admin, so these two, has to be accessible only for administrators. Again, just annotate it with appropriate voter. So that's all from Delta Spy framework. Uh, Ron said on the beginning that uh, there was some scene framework with a lot of modules. One of these modules was security. Some functionality from the security module was uh, undertaken by security, uh, Delta Spy security. At, uh, and some functionality from uh, SIM security was integrated into already existing framework, which is PicketLink. So what's PicketLink? PicketLink is uh, application security framework which is targeted for Java E application. Uh, some of the more important features are the ability of uh, authenticating users or access authorization. PicketLink has uh, IDM, which is really elaborated uh, management of users, groups, role, permissions, relationships, and, and so on, and lot of other features. Uh, Picketing, by the way, integrates the Spike security. And what's great that uh, it implements functionality which is not included in the Delta Spike security. So it's a very great supplement for the Delta Spike security. And it's the best solution for SIEM or Delta Spike based applications. The last framework I'm going to talk about today is Agrava. So we've got four of our favorite questions. So, what is Agrava? Again, CDI extension framework. Its processor is social, uh, SIEM social. Uh, why? why? It exists. Uh, the purpose is to deal with uh, social media and their services based on OAuth. Uh, who developed this framework? It's uh, JBoss developer Antoine Sabot Durant and CDI community. And the releases, the last release uh, was 0.7.0, uh, uh, released last year in November. So, what provides Agrava? provides uh, API, which enables to developers uh, to deal with uh, services implement, implemented based on two versions of OAuth. Then specific API for uh, three social networks, which are Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. In addition, API, uh, which, enables to, which enables to retrieve uh, some basic information uh, about the users from these three social services. And of course, SPI, which provides to developers an option to extend the current Agorawa with new modules and new services and so on. So how, how the hell it works? In the first step, you need to, uh, in, you need to declare your application on the desired social media website, then you will get the app keys. Uh, which basically is a pair, uh, key and secret, and then produce this app keys uh, and set it uh, into your application. Uh, the producer needs to CDI, pro, uh, CDI annotations, which are application scope produces, then uh, annotation which points to desired uh, social service. In this case, it's Twitter. And the annotation of the application, which says uh, under which prefix uh, the application can fi could find the app keys in the settings file Agorava properties. This is the prefix. 
Uh, okay, we got the application configured. So how to manage the auth authorization? What we need is just to inject a uh, auth lifecycle service and call the method start dance for. It will generate us a URL. Uh, we can uh, redirect the user to this URL uh, and all the auth flow, flow will be done for us. W what we need to do is uh, when we call the start dance for, it, ne uh, it needs two attributes. The first one points to, again, points to, to desired service, social service, again, it's Twitter. The second one points to the, points to path. Well, where is your internal callback page, which uh, the default uh, ser servlet can uh, the callback redirects to. So you need to handle there the callback of the, the outflow. Okay, after the successful process, you are able to work with the user's information. Just again, inject appropriate object with appropriate annotation against Twitter. You can get the screen name, profile ID, or whatever you want. Or if you want to send a tweet, it's similar. Just inject object with appropriate uh, annotation. In this example, it was always Twitter. It's same uh, for Facebook or LinkedIn. They are just different annotations, different objects, just different names. But it's similar. It works similar. Uh, okay, we got some demo. It works or Hopefully, not? it will work. It should show your tweets right now if you have tweeted anything. But uh, put your we'll microphone. See. I have to turn it on. No. Okay. Well. Given that this is a live demo, it is, it is bound to not work, so this is the very expected state. So maybe just a quick check. <laughs> and Have uh, you sent it as some tweets or not? <laughs> the reason could be possibly that uh, there is a problem with connection, obviously. Yes. So, if you if you haven't sent uh, any tweets, maybe now is the right time. I will try it through the Wi-Fi network. Let's try it again. Uh, oh, great! Ah, it works. Thanks. So one tweet. <laughs> if if you want to send something, it's it's live, so you will see yourself on the screen. Here's the chance. <laughs> so the question is, uh, which CDI version does build spike target? Does it work with EE7 and uh, CDI 1.1? Well, Delta Spike, uh, uh, one, th one interesting thing before I answer the question is that Delta Spike is not meant only for Java EE, but it's also for Java SE, basically. It tries to be quite versatile. But uh, it uh, should, uh, and it, it tries to be versatile also in, uh, in, uh, in uh, this uh, way that it is meant for EE6, basically. It, uh, tries to add some features which are missing. It's the usual reason why we use some frameworks. But it absolutely should work on uh, EE7 as well. It's tested on E7, E6, and I hope I've answered the question. By the way, uh, this demo is uh, written with uh, Agorawa. So it collects all the tweets with the Agorawa utils. No one? So do you have any questions <laughs> without sending tweets? It looks so lonely. Maybe you have, oh. one <laughs> you have one question. How could you contribute? All the three projects has its own uh, Git repositories, issue trackers, websites, and so on. Uh, so you can find out everything what you want. You don't have to rewrite these URLs. Our Presentation is accessible on this page. And still, if you don't have any, any more questions or any tweets, then. Do you plan, uh, or is, are there any plans in Agora for supporting Google Plus? So the question was whether there's uh, any plans to support uh, Google Plus in Agoraba? I'm not sure. I'm not the product manager, but. <laughs> 
maybe if you will write the, <laughs> the <laughs> new module, definitely yes. That's the usual answer. It's open source, so you can contribute. And <laughs> <laughs> no? So I have to thank you. Uh, if you want to kind of give us a feedback on defconf.cz slash f slash 72 and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you. Thank you. Teraz mi to napisał. Wait, wait, wait. Just one more tweet. Yay. Thanks. It's possible to do Secret process. I'm afraid I can also, I can answer this, so. You can see that. We can talk about this later. No, but um, it has some kind of security policy. In I'm not completely sure about the answer, so. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.